Today we're taking a look at my current Unraid server that I use for all of my data. Stuff like my uh, Linux ISOs, system backups, my home lab files, and just more digital junk. I've been an Unraid user for many years now, and I've really watched this storage operating system grow into an awesome hypervisor and storage combo type of product with a huge community, and it's got tons of support and tons of apps. This video is mostly an update to my last main Unraid server video, which was admittedly quite a while ago. I used to use an AMD 1920X Threadripper system, which was super awesome. That system had tons of CPU power, tons of PCI Express lanes, and best of all, I got it way after the first gen Threadrippers came out, so the price was definitely right. The only issue that I had with this platform was the power usage. Both idle and load power usage was a little bit higher than I'd prefer. I took full advantage of all of the CPU power, and I run some game servers, some virtual machines, and a couple of dockers that are pretty much always doing stuff. That system idled around 70 watts, with just one or two drives going, and when the system was really busy, that CPU was pretty much chugging down about 200 to 240 watts. I know that that doesn't sound like a ton, especially for people out there who are running like R720 or R730 servers, uh, but I really did want to get that power consumption even lower. Power obviously costs money, but I also wanted the server to last a little bit longer if the power went out and I had to switch over to UPS power. So right now, my Unraid server is powered by my Intel i5 12600K with a Gigabyte Z690 Gaming X DDR4 motherboard. I'm running a 2x16 gig memory kit for a total of 32 gigabytes of DDR4-3600. I'm not actually running the memory at 3600 mega transfers per second though, it's actually stock 2133 because I noticed when I did enable XMP that increased the system power usage by about 10 watts. After disabling it and testing, I pretty much noticed no benefit for the overall system because I wasn't really using this as a main gaming PC. It was really more of a hypervisor and storage system, so higher memory frequency didn't really matter. As for how I'm cooling the CPU down, I'm actually accomplishing that with an Arctic i35. This was a cooler that Arctic sent over for a review. I noticed that the height was really close to fitting in this 4U server, but it was just a little bit too tall. So as you can see, I just removed the shroud, I took some velcro, and I velcroed an Arctic fan to the heatsink. Not exactly an out-of-box solution, but I like the Arctic products, and this actually works quite well for my setup. As for the hard drive layout, it's basically the same as it was before. I've got two 14 terabyte parity drives, one 12 terabyte data drive, one 10 terabyte data drive, and three 8 terabyte data drives along with my main cache drive, which is a Team Group MP34. I selected that one because it's TLC, it has a DRAM cache, and the write endurance is really high, something over like one TBW, so I'll be able to use this for quite some time. I mentioned before that I'm running some virtual machines, which I am, a couple of Linux ones, and most importantly, a Windows virtual machine, which I'm actually using as a regular desktop for my studio set. I have a GTX 1050 Ti and a bunch of USB devices passed through to it. It actually works very well. I do screen recording and audio recording for most of my videos on this virtual machine. I can even do a little bit of light gaming and streaming. It's very responsive in general. I can't really tell the difference between this and bare metal, and for this VM, I really only assigned it four of the P cores. I did assign hyperthreads as well, so it's a pretty decent experience. For me, this was super convenient. I didn't have to build a second machine. I did have to buy a couple of cables to reach my desk, but that really wasn't a very large cost. And overall, I actually save even more on power usage because this is already part of the Unraid system. As for the cabling, it's basically a bundle of HDMI and DisplayPort cables with a really long USB 3.0 cable. I plug in my keyboard, all my accessories, microphone, headset, USB drives, all that good stuff, and it just works. I did want to mention, I did actually disable the turbo mechanism, as well as the XMP feature. This is mainly just to keep the power usage down for the server. With the Windows Gaming VM running, and about 3 or 4 drives spinning, the whole server is only using about 53 watts, which is a typical idle-ish type of load for 
this system with all of the drives spinning and the gaming VM actually doing something and my handbrake docker churning away at encoding video, which I do on the eCores by the way, super efficient and decently fast. The total system power draw is only about 120 to 135 watts. Depending on what the ambient temperature is, that'll kind of have an impact on the power draw and the cooling. I think that's really awesome. I'm basically getting about the same amount of work done and I'm using way less power at the same time, both idle and under load. So this server actually costs me less to just run it and have it exist. So yeah, I would say that the system as it sits now, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm confident though, I am going to upgrade and probably change something. I just always have a habit of upgrading my home lab stuff, but right now I do like this setup. Everyone knows stuff's pretty crazy with VMware right now. As for me and my home lab, I'm probably gonna end up decommissioning my ESX server. And I'm probably gonna take all of the VMs that I consider to be kind of production, but for my home lab and pretty much move them over to either a Proxmox or a Zen hypervisor that's dedicated. I might even put a couple on Unray. Really depends if I can turn them into dockers and how all of the compute works out. If you have any questions or if you're looking for me to cover anything in particular, definitely make sure to leave a comment. I read them all and I always try to respond when I can. If you're into gaming or home lab videos like this one, I would definitely say get subscribed to the channel and drop a like on the video. That lets YouTube know that people who are interested in this kind of stuff, they might want to see this one. Before you head out, don't forget to hit that bell icon if you actually want YouTube notifications. That's pretty much the only way they'll send them now. Until next time, keep your system up and running.